Here's your scientific notation study guide. For part one, tell whether each number is written correctly or incorrectly in scientific notation. If it's incorrectly written, state the reason and correct the number. So looking at number one, I see 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative third. 9.9 .9 is between one and 10, so that's okay. And 10 to the negative third is an acceptable um, power of 10 and exponent. So number one is correct. So we don't need to put a reason. Looking at number two, 0 0.43. Well, right off the bat, I see that this is less than one. That's incorrect. The power of 10 and the exponent is okay, but this is incorrect. The reason it's incorrect is because our coefficient needs to be between 1 and less than 10. So 0 0.43 is less than 1. To correct this, it should be 4.3 times 10. And if we move that decimal once, then this would be to the fourth power. The next step is to write each number into scientific notation. So for number three, we want to place the decimal between the six and the two to make a coefficient of 6.2. Then write your power of 10 times 10. The last step is to count the decimal positions from here to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves to the right. Small numbers have negative exponents. So 6.2 times 10 to the negative seventh. Same directions for number four. Write this number into scientific notation. So this is a very large number. We would move the decimal between the nine and the one. So 9.1 .1 times 10. The hidden decimal hides behind the whole number. We count from the back to between the 9 and 1 how many powers of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 powers of 10. Positive exponents have, or positive numbers or big numbers have positive exponents. Sorry, jumbled my words. Okay, let's look at number 5. Circle the greater number and explain your choice. So my first thought is to look at the exponents. 10 to the negative 11th versus 10 to the negative 13th. Which number is greater or bigger? 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th is the bigger number. To explain this, you could put your answer in standard form and compare, or you could write a written explanation. I'm going to put the numbers in standard form and talk about the number of decimal positions. First, 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th power, I would move the decimal 11 places to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then I would fill that in with zeros. So this number is just way too small to even pronounce, but it's a decimal with 10 zeros in front of the 39. Let's look at uh, the 5.7 times 10 to the 13th and compare those. So I write down the coefficient and I move the decimal 13 powers of 10 to make the number smaller. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and draw the decimal out front and fill it in with zeros. So the second um, number has more zeros in front of it. It's smaller. So which number is the greater number? It's 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th. It's a larger number. There's 
10 zeros in front of the 39 here. And there's 12 zeros, the decimal point, and 12 zeros. For number six, we are to order the numbers from least to greatest. I noticed that two of the numbers are already written in scientific notation. So one way to solve this problem is to put the third number into scientific notation and then compare the powers of 10. So this would become 8.7 times 10, and then the decimal would be 1, 2, 3, or the exponent, I'm sorry, the exponent would be 3. Now, to put the numbers in order from least to greatest, look for the smallest power of 10. So we have two that are 10 to the third power and one that's 10 to the fourth power. So this one is the biggest right here. That's the greatest number. Our next step would be to examine the coefficient. 1.97, or $1.97, is smaller than 8.7. So our least number is 1.97 times 10 to the third. Our next smallest number was um, 8,700. 8, I'm going to put the original value here. And our th greatest number had the greatest power of 10. Now I also want to show you that we could take the two numbers in scientific notation and uh, put them into standard form just to be sure. So, so 1.97, move the decimal three places, one, two, three, that is 1,970. And then we already knew this one was the biggest one. But one, two, three, four, this is 39800. Zero, zero. So you can see small, middle, and then the largest. Okay, so that is the front side of your study guide. Let's go to the back. Okay, now we're going to evaluate your answers in scientific notation. Evaluate means to solve. Our first one is an addition problem. So we could do two strategies with this. We could use the calculator and make sure that the calculator is in science mode, which we've shown you how to do that in class. Um, so you could do that. Or you could um, make, when you're adding and subtracting, have common powers of 10. So I'll show you both ways. Okay, for number seven, it's an addition problem. So to add it by hand, I would have to have the same power of 10. So I would need to make both of these be 10 to the fifth power. In order to add one to this exponent, I need to move the decimal to the left one. So this becomes 0 .0 or 0 0.666 times 10 to the fifth. Now I just add the coefficients together. So 0 0.666 and put a placeholder in here and add. So this becomes 6, 13, 12, 13, carry the 1, and then the decimal just drops right down. And we keep 10 to the fifth power. Also, double check that in your calculator. Again, make sure you put your calculator in science mode using the second function. Okay, number eight is a subtraction problem. So to do this by hand, we would have to have the same power of 10, just like in the addition problem. So we're gonna make this 10 to the 19th. So we need to add one to the exponent and slide the decimal over one. So this is 0 0.3642 times 10 to the 19th power. Then add up the coefficients. So line up the decimals, put a placeholder in, and subtract. Okay, you can also put this in your calculator, this step, if you needed to. I'm going to borrow each time because I cannot take a small number away from a larger number. So let me set this up for borrowing. And now subtract. So we get 10 minus 2 is 8, 13 minus 4 is 9, 14 minus 6 is 8, and then 8, bring the decimal down and 6. And then we keep 10 to the 19th power. 
Again, I encourage you to go do that both ways. Double check it in the calculator in science mode. Okay, moving on to number nine, we have a multiplication problem. So for multiplication and division, we can use our exponent properties where we, um, if we're multiplying, we keep the base and add the exponents. So I'm looking here, we're gonna do regular math here. So that's 12 times two, that's 24. And then we keep the base and add the exponents. So that's 10 to the 11th power. And then we have to put this in proper scientific notation. Uh, so this has to go, the decimal has to go over one. So our final answer is 2.4 times 10. When we move to the left one, that adds one onto our exponent. So our final answer is 2.4 times 10 to the 12th. Again, I keep saying use that calculator in the science mode to double check that. Okay, number 10 is a division problem. So we could use the quotient of powers, our exponent properties, where we um, do regular math with our coefficients and then keep the base, subtract the exponents. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. And then we keep the base and subtract the exponents. And this is ready to go. That's in scientific notation. Okay, our next problem is to select all the expressions that equal 6 times 10 to the 8th power. So that means there may be one, more than one answer. There probably is more than one answer. Um, I might express this in standard form as well. So 6 times 10 to the 8th power. Okay, that's what 6 times 10 to the 8th power looks like. Let's look at choice A. Uh, this is a multiplication problem. So we would keep uh, do regular math here, so that is 6, and then keep the base, add the exponents, so 6 times 10 to the 8th is a match, so A is a choice. Nine or Letter B looks a little bit weird. I'd have to move the decimal once and take one away from here, so this would be a match. I could also write this into standard form. 0 0.6 and move this nine places one two three four five six seven eight nine and fill it in and then I might rewrite that with all the squiggles but I can see one two three four five six seven eight it is uh, the same value so that is a match as well uh, 60 to the eighth power, I might use that caret key on the calculator and I could see this number is huge, that's not a match. And uh, letter D, this has nine zeros and our original value has eight zeros, so that is not a match. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for part one and part two will be in another video.